Hey students, I wanted to go over the chapter six in the buyer's office from the Weiss book with you. A little bit more detail through this video for this week. So let's take a look at the chapter and I wanna highlight some areas as, as you read, hopefully you can highlight and follow through. All right, let's start it with this buyer's office. That's what Weiss is talking about here. He talks a little bit about um, establishing trust. And so I jump right into the core part. Um, in any business, establishing trust is is key and that's really about what this chapter is about talks about some different ways that trust can be established but let's move on through the chapter he talks about just really communicating being polite he's got ways to just really help you get going but really what it's about it's about gaining dynamic capture is what he calls it so if you move over here he talks about importance of making sure that you are staying focused with your buyer he equates it to you have to maintain uh, the boat in a particular channel if you want to go in the right direction when you get in conversations with folks in business there's really this kind of challenge of i want to be liked i want you to like me you need to kind of trust me but then if you're not careful, you can spend a lot of time talking about things that don't go towards the direction you're after. So he talks about maintaining your channel and help how you can get that done. So he talks about some little phrases here. May I quickly summarize at this time? But really what he's trying to get to is this thing called dynamic capture. You've got discussion with people that you visit with. And in that discussion, if you can keep it guided the right way, they will share with you things that matter. As you gather the things that matter, you end up with doing what something he calls dynamic capture. Ultimately, your position is what you're after. So instead of merely hoping you uncover the client's needs, you need to kind of create a basket of needs that they have through dynamic capture. That basket of needs, he's got an example here. This is not always what it is, but retention of employees, change in leadership and people being innovative. So he's probably talking to somebody about maybe what are some strategies they need to keep the right employees or to bring the right employees to their business. That's their struggle. That's where he was brought in as a consultant. So what he looked at was those are for the four things that this company is needing. Now, as you understand that, you can create a solution that offers all of those objectives. So he calls that dynamic capture. Trying to get this conceptual agreement is really what the key is. And like he says, the key is to creating a high fee proposal. So if you can give them a proposal that directly connects with what they're after through that dynamic capture process, then you'll actually end up getting to be a, a lot better in a, in a given a proposal that works. So he goes through here and really talks about these objectives. You need to read, of course, all of this. I'm kind of highlighting some things that I think are important. When he goes through here, he talks about these 10 questions that, that you need to make sure that you get answered. And so like, what's the ideal outcome you'd like to experience? What results are you trying to accomplish? What better product or service condition are you seeking? So these are kind of 10 boilerplate questions that he's really trying to get at. And they might also be opportunities for you. So that's kind of what we're looking at is gaining this conceptual agreement. He talks about measuring success and how to monitor that. Um, I really jump right to this value concept. That's huge to me. Um, what's the consequences of this proposal? And that's if you can put the right basket together and you can give the right answers to that basket. In other words, you help them get those goals, then you need to really make sure you, you communicate or understand what the value is. And so um, an example would be, he talks about profit. It would seem obvious that higher profits are an objective, but ask yourself and your buyer, would higher profits enable you to achieve your following goals, like paying down debt, expanding facilities? So simply profit is, is one thing, but there's a lot of other ways to create more value than just profit itself. I want to be more profitable. Actually, you want to be more profitable to achieve these other things which make your business stronger. So really, it's trying to make sure that you can focus on all of these other things to really expand the value proposition. So anyway, you've got details he lays out here in value. 
He also goes into this thing about pouring concrete. I read it like this. In the, in the last minutes of your meeting, you want to try to solidify these things that you're about. So you've, you've learned about this dynamic capture. You've, you've, you've rephrased these things back to them. They've said, yes, that's what we're after. Now you've built value. And at the very end, he kind of says to go back and, and, and really kind of pour concrete to secure this solid foundation about what you're actually doing. And that's what he goes through here at the end. He even asked to go back and look at these uh, uh, example of 10 things that Fortune uh, 1,000 firms have come up with. So he kind of goes through some examples. He goes through some Allenisms about this. And then he goes through these, these, um, these uh, definitions at the end. So that's kind of the idea of chapter six in a framework. Hopefully it gives you kind of some ideas as you read the chapter to make sure that you identify those things. These are some areas I highlighted. Hopefully this review of chapter six helps you as you read the chapter yourself. Thanks.